Hello guys and welcome to another video. I apologize for not uploading recently, but that's because I've been sick, so I couldn't record or stream. But I'm feeling better now, so you can expect both of those this week. But anyway, getting into the video, I'm going to show you how to always win the Zed matchup. Because uh, he's still a pretty popular champion in low elo, although I don't see him as much. Uh, recently I got to play versus two Zed players, one was Grandmaster, the other was Masters. First we're going to be looking at my lane against the Master tier Zed player. So this game, I actually decided to run Ignite and Scorch. I was just uh, getting a bit tired of the teleport playstyle, so I decided, you know what, I am going to start playing like a psychopath. Teleport is definitely more consistent, but if you feel like playing like a psychopath for a few games, just start taking Ignite. But uh, let me explain to you why I think this matchup is really echo favored. The reason for that is because Zed's trading ability, his W, is also his main wave clear tool and it has a really long cooldown. ZW, 22 second cooldown I think, compared to Echo Q on a 9 second cooldown, and Echo E on an 8 second cooldown, which gives you ample time to punish him when he uses his W. But the main mistake I see Echo players do in this matchup is just trading for no reason. Why are you using your EQ onto Zed when he has his W up? Of course he is going to just W behind him, hit you with double shuriken, electrocute proc, yeah, you're, you're screwed now. That is the biggest mistake you can do against the Zed. Instead, you just want to play around waves, and you're level 1, because you're stronger level 1. Which is why you want to get priority. If you get priority in any melee matchup, even if it's a losing matchup, you can win the matchup, because you hit your level 2 first. So that's why I instantly start hitting the waves to secure priority. But I am stronger level 1, because I have Halo Blades, so if he walks up, we can just trade with him. I could have won this trade even harder if I used my E after Halo Blades, but it's fine, we still get priority. And now we hit our level 2 first, he can't walk up. He is forced to sit back and farm with Q, meaning we avoid all his poke. We don't need to play dodgeball, we don't need to bait his Q because he's just going to be using it to CS anyway. We are under zero pressure this lane, we can just farm for free, and that is exactly what you want to do. And if he ever walks up for CS, then yes, you can trade. Just make sure his Q or W is on cooldown. And this is a perfect example of how not to use W as Zed, because he didn't clear the wave or trade, it was simply a waste of a 20 second long cooldown ability. And remember, this guy is Master's elo, so imagine what mistakes people are making in lower ranks, because now he can't really trade with me, and I get to crash this wave for free. I actually checked bot lane, and uh, I think you guys know what I'm going to do after crashing the wave. That's right, we are roaming bot lane. And this, I am allowed to do this because I slow pushed, first three waves, crashed on the cannon, and now I have a big roam timer because Zed is forced to clear the three stacked waves under his tower. And when you're roaming, you always want to be looking at the lane you're roaming to. So that way I saw Jin use both the summoners, and because we have this information, we now know how we should play out the fight, where my jungler gets two kills, and we get to collect the massive bot wave. In lower elos, you would have to ping your ADC or just type to them, tell them to go mid lane, so you're not sharing resources. But eventually, you will want to swap back to mid, because uh, you are stronger, you want to be mid lane, you want to be able to impact more of the map, be there for any river fights, and you can't really do that from bot lane. But now, I have to crash this wave, and my support, I see this mistake a lot, just roams. You don't really want to roam when the wave is pushing, because you're going to lose so many minions, which is why I spam ping my team to come and help me crash the wave. I even type to them as well, because, you know, communication is really important in solo queue. If I don't communicate, how will my teammates know what I want to do in the game? And if no one else is shot calling, then you should try and pick up that role. And uh, just be patient, I just wait for my teammates, and uh, they have no summoners, meaning it's a very free kill. And you know, some people would say, well, my teammates would never do this for me in my elo. But is this really your teammates fault, or is it your fault for not communicating? And when fighting like this, especially as Echo, you want to just pick one target to focus. And here I pick Janna, she has no summoners and is far too overextended. And if Jin stays, we can actually dive him, it's a 3v1 scenario, and in dives, you want to be the one to tank. So I should have communicated that, but instead my Viego actually tanks the tower, so uh, 
we, we trade one for one, but he does get executed. And the main thing is Jin loses this massive wave. So just by this one roam, I have gotten a huge lead for myself and put the enemy ADC insanely far behind. But now we want to swap back, so we push the next wave to make sure I don't lose any minions. And while I do this, I just want to address one of the questions I've seen quite frequently in my videos, and that is why don't you level alt at 6? I thought this was a very well-known echo trick, but it seems uh, some people still don't know about it. The main reason is uh, you can't, the enemy can't see your clone. By not leveling your alt, they can get baited into thinking, oh, echo alt is uh, on cooldown. I've uh, baited a lot of flashes, a lot of ultimates with, that, with this trick. And it also makes it much easier to land your ultimate. I'm going to show you a few clips here of why it is so useful. So while these clips play, I thought it would be interesting to talk about matchmaking. Recently, matchmaking has been really weird. I have gotten into games like this, for example, with a challenger player, two grandmaster players, then three diamond players. Really strange stuff. I'm not sure if this is something that like usually happens at start of season, because for the last two seasons I didn't really play at the start but uh, it was just really weird to experience. But now getting back into the game, return to mid lane, and you want to push. You have an advantage, you want to expand that lead. Unfortunately, I can't actually roam here, because I don't have summoners, and I would just be too late to the play. So there's no reason to roam. Instead, you can look to catch someone when they're walking back to mid. If I landed my W here, Janna would have been dead. Unfortunately, I missed it. It is what it is, sometimes you miss your abilities. But the important thing is, Janna is forced to recall. With Nautilus's pressure, I get to crash mid-wave. And you know what we do? The bot wave is crashing, Janna is in base, it's a 3v1 scenario, it is a free dive because we got Jin summoners earlier in the game. So guys, let me know how is your climb going. I hope my videos have been helpful, and I hope you guys are climbing this season. I know I've uh, read some of the, the news, unfortunately, Protobelt, Lichbane, a few of the other on air items are getting nerfed sadly. Hopefully the nerfs aren't too big, well we'll see what happens when they are, and hopefully Echo will still be in a good spot when they hit. Now this time I don't stay bot lane. Why? Because Anivia is still alive to get the CS, and I have a big wave to collect when I recall and go back mid. Now some of you may be thinking, how does this explain how to lane against Zed? You haven't even laned against him very much this game. And yes, that is the whole idea. Against champions like Zed, or any champion that is simply stronger than you in the 1v1, you don't want to lane against them. You want to play to your strength as Echo, which is your wave clear, and your roaming, your diving. So that is exactly how you can beat Zed, because his wave clear tool it's the same as his trading tool, and it's on such a long cooldown, you can abuse that to just push waves and roam. But now I'm going to show you where if you do fight Zed, this is how you do it. You use W first, this way you mitigate some damage, then use your ult to block his ult damage. And there you go. That is a perfect example of why you use you don't level your ultimate at 6. Unfortunately, I just walk back in to the... Uh, I just get shot in the face by Jin, but it's fine. We just go back to mid lane and we just push. Unfortunately, my teammates overstay, but there's nothing really you can do about it. No point in me roaming here without my ultimate, and I would just be late to the play anyway. So instead, I just stay mid and collect some plates. And just always be there when plays are happening. In solo queue, you, can, you have to try and anticipate what's going to happen. Like here, my, my Viego is doing dragon, and the enemy team is trying to contest, but only Janna is there, so you can kind of tell something is going to happen. At surface level, this just looks like a one for one trade, but it is actually extremely in my favour. Because Zed dies, I get to push mid, take plates, and get an even bigger lead. And now guys, always recall spend your money. When you're low on mana and have a lot of gold, no point in staying in lane, because you are creating no pressure on the map that way. Best time to recall is obviously after crashing a wave, because that way you lose minimal. And now that we are back in mid, can you guess what we are going to do? Yes, roam. However, this is a unique scenario where it is actually better to roam without pushing the wave. 
The reason being if I did, I would simply be too late to the play. And it looks like it could be a really big play because my top laner is there, both junglers are going to be there, so it is important I am there at the same time. My judgement was actually really off here. Me being in this fight did not change anything. So in hindsight, I should have just stayed mid to take the tower and get more waves for myself. But it's obviously much easier to analyse plays like these when you are reviewing a game rather than being in the game having to make the decision in a split second. But that is the laning phase pretty much over. We uh, managed to take the mid tower down and now there isn't really much of a lane. So uh, I hope you guys learned something from this lane and let's move on to the next lane against a Grandmaster Z player. But before we do, I would just like to thank all of you for the support I've been getting on my videos. It is a really great feeling when I wake up and I see all the positive comments, so thank you guys. And if you do have any questions or want some echo advice, leave a comment, I'll try to respond to it as thoroughly as possible. I also try to stream as often as I can, and all the VODs are there on my channel, you just have to click the live section to find them. But I digress. Let us get into the lane. And Zed, he uses his Q for no reason. Perfect time to trade. His Q's on cooldown, you can go in. Unfortunately, I don't get my passive, so he hits me with a Q on the wave out. And you can already see, this Zed is playing much better. He is actually contesting my push, and he didn't get chunked for free at level 1. So now, you see the wave is actually fairly even. So this Zed has done a really good job at preventing me from getting my level 2 first. So this way, we actually hit it at the same time which makes it a bit awkward for me to trade. But if you understand Zed's trading patterns, you can trade into him. And here is a perfect example of how to do so. You see, I use my EQ and immediately sidestep. So that way I get hit by none of the shurikens, so I don't take damage. And now his W is on cooldown, so I should instantly shove the next wave with my Q. This is for a few reasons. One, it allows me to avoid the potential jack skank. When he moves to his bot side jungle, he could do it via mid gank. Two, crashing the wave allows me to go and ward Jax's bot jungle, and this will give my team info when he finishes clearing. Three, it allows me to potentially set up a gank for my jungler, because the wave will push back to me, I can hold it on my own side. And four, it allows me to avoid Zed's trade timer when his W comes back up. Thankfully, Zed uses his W really poorly, but because I didn't crash the third wave, it has some really negative consequences. And just as my Zin's out pinged, Jax ganks. But it's not very threatening, because Zed has no W, and I have my abilities up. But I made a big mistake here, and that is by using my E over the wall, I actually miss XP. So you see, I am still level 3 after this wave. But when Zed clears those minions, he will be level 4. And because I didn't crash a big wave, I should not be roaming, especially when I'm at a level disadvantage. Here, Zed could have actually prevented me from getting back to lane. If he just threatens me with his combo, I cannot walk back to lane. He does let me back into lane, but I am still at a level disadvantage, so trading is really risky here and could potentially get me killed. But because both junglers are fighting in river, I thought it was worth the risk to bait Zed into trading with me instead of joining the fight. He does, and if I didn't dodge the shurikens, I would have actually died here. But now, I am in a pretty rough spot. He is always going to have the level advantage because of that one jack skank, so it is really hard for me to walk up for CS. The way I could have mitigated this was just by staying in lane instead of trying to roam. Thankfully, I do have teleport this game, which means I can minimize the amount of CS I lose by using TP, to compensate. However, I can't have any pressure on the map because Zed has the access to the wave, so he is always going to be able to push waves before me and recall before me, so I am forced to sit under tower and collect waves. However, I have a little trick here which is faking my recall. By doing this, Zed is forced to shove the wave because if he doesn't, I could TP back and get a roam timer for myself. So he does something really smart here which is recalling on a cannon wave because no matter what I do, it is a good outcome for him. Because if I match his recall and TP, then he won't miss any minions and come back to lane with an item lead. And if I decide to stay in lane and shove the wave, then he gets a roam timer by the time I shove and TP back. The second option is what I do in the game, but in hindsight, 
I should have just matched his recall, because in solo queue, giving your opponent a roam timer is extremely dangerous. Especially when it's an assassin like Zed, Tal, and Kiana, giving roam timers to these champions can be game losing. During the game, I was really scared that they would do a 4 man dive bot, because they have Zed alt and both summoners, Jax E, there is a good chance it works out, even if it is a bit on the riskier side. And if we go back to this frame, you see the bot wave is crashing, so they have a minion wave to dive with. But in the game they go for the more consistent play which is just taking raptors away from my jungler. I can't really help because none of my teammates are in a position to, so I just shove out the next wave to make sure I am first to whatever play happens next. Even though I was first to move, I wasn't paying enough attention to the map to realize that none of my teammates were in a position to follow up, so instead I just end up getting pincered by Zed and Jax. And uh, would you believe it, that is first blood at uh, 7 minutes into the game. Now this 1 for 1 has a few different effects. 1. It allows my jungler to take Drake so he gets a lead. 2. I miss my full cannon wave mid, which puts me a bit behind. But most importantly, it mismatches my tempo. So by the time I return to lane, Zed would have recalled. Then after I push the wave, Zed will return to lane. So you see, during this period, neither me or Zed will have any opportunity to interact with each other. And this is perfect for me, because I have no ultimate. And because I have no ultimate, roaming here is extremely risky. Especially against a champion like Gwen, who has a lot of outplay tools in her kit, and we don't have Ignite to counteract her healing. Not to mention she's also full HP, so there's not a high chance that this works out. What I should have done instead is just walk into the enemy jungle and get a deep ward. But now that I'm here, it is better to just fully commit to the play. Because if I were to turn around and walk mid now, I would lose the wave anyway. And you know what, we managed to buy enough time for Zin Zhao to get here. And can we just take a moment to appreciate this flash from Zin Zhao? So we traded 3 plays for that play, which is really not worth, and that's why it's so important to analyze the situation before roaming. Now coming back to the lane, I actually want to trade with Zed, because my Kai'Sa is running towards mid, there's a good chance we can kill him if I force his W. Now that his W is on cooldown, I can get a really good trade when my abilities come back up. And because Kai'Sa is here, it turns a good trade into a kill. Zed is dead, so we have priority. Which means after pushing the wave, I can go and collapse on the enemy jungler with my Zin Zhao. And for some reason, Jax decides to take this route, I'm not really sure why, if he just walked through his own jungle he would have been fine. I really don't know what I was thinking with this recall, it was a huge wasted opportunity. I could have at least taken the mid plate, I could have helped my jungler with void grubs, I could have even roamed bot lane because the enemy jungler is dead, I had so many options here and I choose to recall. It's like going to a steakhouse and then ordering a salad, I have no idea what I was doing here. And I couldn't even buy anything significant on my recall. But anyway, we are back in lane, and come on, you know what to do. We are going to just shove and roam. And I think you can definitely make an argument for roaming both to top or bot here. But I decide to roam bot lane. The enemy bot lane is already low, and I think it's just better to play for a Kai'Sa Senna lane than an Aatrox lane. For some reason my Kai'Sa decides to walk back and die, however I will not complain because I get to stay bot and take platings for myself. But always remember to recall and spend your gold. This was a really good try from Zed, because I didn't have ultimate, there was a good chance he could have killed me here, but he didn't account for my teammates being there, so 
we just kill him for free. And this was a very bad death for him because he misses so much from it. Obviously, if my Senna wasn't nearby, I would not have taken the 1v1. But because she was, I ended up getting so much off of it, putting me really far ahead of the Zed. Coming back to lane, I could try and trade with the Zed, but he has Eclipse and W, making it hard to kill. So instead, you want to just play to your strengths, and as Echo, that is shoving every wave and roaming. You are really strong at diving in particular, with your W and ultimate. So that is exactly what I'm going to do, by just pushing the wave and roaming bot. And you see, Zed simply cannot match my wave clear, and at this point, I am strong enough to just face tank his combo. And I actually used TP here, because my Zinzao was contesting grubs, but in hindsight, there was no real reason to use TP because my top laner has priority. And now once again, I am not trading with the Zed. I am just pushing and doing things on the map. But obviously if there's nothing to do on the map, then yeah, maybe you can trade. But there are there usually is something to do on the map. Very rarely will there be nothing to do on the map. And when you run uh, Lich Bane with Relentless Hunter and Magi's, you are so fast. Now if you notice, I have participated in 10 of my team's total 14 kills, and that is an insane kill participation to have. Obviously in lower elos, it's harder to do this because your teammates will just fight randomly, so don't worry about this number too much. But anyway, that is the laning phase over, well technically it ended when we broke the bot tower, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from this video, and I went a bit heavier on the explanation side, so do let me know in the comments what you thought. And as always, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.